wait, so is anybody talking about humans? Are humans changing as a result of technology? Um, looking in fields outside of negotiation, I found that, yeah, it, it, it's, 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 it's well documented and it's increasingly well documented that people are not only changing in their behaviors that we all know, but they're changing, sorry, I, I was once uh, uh, guided by a, a, a wise mentor that when I'm speaking about people and humans, it's best not to use the term they, it would be much more, you know, to use the term we, uh, and I, I'm taking that to heart. So we are changing on the psychological plane, we're changing on, this, on the plane of top cognition, we're changing physically and we're changing in our interactions. And I will very quickly show some of those. But of course, before I show some of those, I'd like to just remind you what we're here for. Of course, all of these areas of being human have a lot to do with negotiation and conflict. Now, my first insights into this, as I said earlier, were on the, in the realm of negotiation, um, and I'm broadening, I'm broadening it to the field of conflict. So if I say negotiation, feel free to zoom out and, and consider non-negotiation settings. Um, just look at this and see if this speaks to you. These are some of our behavioral changes. Um, the degree to which you've changed any of these somewhat depends on the culture you're in, but mainly it depends on uh, when you were born and how quickly you adopted technology. Uh, also, we each have a different, we each have a different evolution with technology, particularly on the behavioral plane. Um, and I, I'd suggest that there's probably, probably many of you do many of these things, have had many changes in this realm and now do many of these things online. I'd also suggest that many of you have at least one thing on this list that you refuse to do online. And that's also interesting. Um, but the behavioral level is, is the easiest to identify. But let's think about this guy. And let's be this guy for a moment. And, and I'd like you to consider your internal response to this. That uh, sort of, that sort of, oh, oh no. And it's not, it's not because, oh, I'm about to do a lot of damage. It's about the kind of damage I'm about to do. It's because when I look at this picture, so after my first knee-jerk response, I say, oh, wow, I'd rather spill that coffee in my lap than spill it on my laptop. And that might give you an inkling over what's going on here. And, and the same is like, what's your, what's your visceral response? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, for me, this happened several times when my kids decided that they wanted to throw my cell phone into the toilet. And this is my cell phone or, you know, my generic cell phone sitting in a bowl of rice in that Schrodinger's cat state of, I don't know whether this will be all right once I take it out of the rice. And what are, what are my concerns and my worries? It's not, oh no, a new phone is gonna cost me $300, $500. That's not, that's not the concern. It's, oh no, I live my life on there. Oh no, uh, uh, for me, my laptop is half of my brain. And yes, it is half of my brain. Um, and, and I think that we are much closer to being cyborgs, half human or part human, part machine interface, than we like to admit. Uh, you know, the fact that we carry our, you know, our, our semi-brain around in our pocket, separated from our skin by a millimeter of cloth, is not really that big of a difference from having it implanted into us. But, you know, I'm not gonna push the cyborg agenda, but I will say that other ways in which we've changed psychologically and physiologically, I'll ask you, have you ever felt your phone ringing, vibrating, telling you that there was a message, and then you took your phone out and looked at it and you discovered that there was no message? And, and then your, your instinct was not to say, oh, my mistake, but to say, no, but where is it? I know that I felt it. And if that's ever happened to you, then you've experienced what a very con a common tendency, I think, I think most of us, perhaps all of us, but I don't, I'm not going to say that, have experienced. It's called phantom vibration syndrome, in which our body physically straining our nerves and our nerve endings physically straining towards our phone 
identify some vibration in the air and notify us that we've received a message, that you have mail going on in our heads. And that's even though uh, technology is not yet connected to us. That is psychological and physiological change. And here's the best example of physiological change. And physiological change is the most important to, to consider because it brings it home. Because when I say change is happening, it's easy to think about that um, sort of in a general, vague, detached way. But what I'm going to suggest now is that, uh, no, this hits much closer to home. Your brain has changed over the past 20 years in a way that it has not changed in all of, in all of human existence. One easy way to discuss this is if you use um, Waze or Google Maps or navigate different ways, different uh, GPS systems. Um, if you rely on these, then your brain is not developing the part of the brain that has developed over millennia to, to help humans get around. It's a part of the brain. It's a physical lump, whatever the size of it, it's a physical lump in your brain. When you use it, it grows. Okay, people who have to drive taxis around London have larger brains, larger brain areas to deal with that. And people who use uh, GPS have smaller brain areas. A same one, this is for the, for, for, for the uh, older amongst you perhaps, uh, uh, is think about how many phone numbers you remembered by heart when you were a child. You knew yours, you knew you know, your home number, maybe your parents, your family, friends. I don't know whether your number is 10, 20, 50. But now ask yourself, how many do you remember now? How many phone numbers do you remember? And you know you're very welcome to type that in the chat if you'd like, because um, I think I think it would be not not only amusing but recognizing um, that we have we have changed. I remember perhaps five numbers, and the reason I remember five numbers is because we have uh, I have offloaded this task to my phone. My phone remembers all of my numbers for me, and in this act. Thank you for everybody who's, who's, uh, who's adding that in. In this act of what's called cognitive offloading, we take things that we used to process cognitively and we hand them over to technology. We tell our brain, listen, don't waste space on that. S dedicate that space to other stuff. And the brain dedicates the space to other stuff and physically rewires our brain to be more efficient because it doesn't need that area to be active. And inside our minds over the past generation, or for the more important part, over the course of our own individual past five, 10, 15, 20 years, our brain has been reforming itself, okay? So again, for all those who thought that we're speaking about external change ideas, nope we are physically changing. <laughs> and Paul, uh, uh, I'll just comment, Paul uh, commented that he knows his own mobile number and his own childhood home number. And I think that that's also a wonderful um, description of sort of how the brain is, is, what parts of the brain is it rewiring? Sure, yes, I can remember the phone number, uh, my phone number in Manhattan at the age of five. I cannot remember my father's phone number. Okay, long-term memory, short-term memory, but we're, you know, we're not talking short-term memory. We're talking, you know, a phone that he's had for the past 20 years. I can't remember it, okay? Um, so if our brain is changing, I, I think I don't even need, I, I don't, I hardly need to go, uh, to go over this list of all the interactional changes that we have experienced over the past. Again, whatever your evolu personal evolution is, whether it's five, 10, 20 years, um, but all of this is true, and it's true in our face-to-face -face engagements and interactions, just as it is true with our online. It's, it's popular now to talk about, well, everything's changed because we're always online, and I'm suggesting that's only half the picture. Everything's changed online and offline. And, and we've changed online and offline. So here's the thing. When I brought these suggestions, of course, you know, um, reading this research in the realms of psychology, in the realms of medicine, in the realms of, uh, of, of neuroplasticity, uh, um, 
I, I, it occurred to me to think, wait, if people are changing and, you know, negotiators are people too, then, you know, simple geome geometrical equations would lead you to sort of the, the conclusions uh, that we reach um, that we are changing in this interaction that we call negotiation. We are changing as negotiators. We are changing as conflict parties. And as we change, the processes themselves are changing as well. 